Welcome back to Faith in Flower. If this is your first time here, my name is Robin, and we have recently moved into a home that we are renovating. Here in the kitchen, we are nearing completion. All of the major elements are in place, but we still haven't done the backsplash, and there's some electrical things we have to take care of, so it may look a little bit incomplete in here, but I am more than happy to be back in the kitchen doing some more baking and things like that that I really enjoy, so I've done a lot of those sort of things this week week. My channel's goal is to encourage you as a homemaker, and I know that looks very different for everyone, but there are common elements and a lot of the things that we do during our week you know, can be considered very mundane. But over the years, I've discovered that there is joy and great satisfaction to be found in accomplishing very small, what can be considered very mundane tasks in our home. Creating a cozy and inviting home is a service that you provide for your family and for anybody that you invite into your home. Even though it's not that glamorous and it's sometimes thankless, it is so valuable and important. So no matter what homemaking looks like for you, I hope that this video gives you some encouragement and some motivation for your week ahead. We have an amazing group of subscribers here at Faith and Flower. I learn so much from you guys down in the comments. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to highlight two of those in today's video because they really helped me out. We'd love to have you join this special community we have here at Faith and Flower. So if you have not already done so, make sure you subscribe. It's absolutely free and easy. Just click on the red button below. So I don't know if you just caught that, but I was laughing because Peyton was crawling underneath the camera so that he wouldn't get into the shot. He knew that I was baking some gluten-free cookies and of course he was curious to see when they're gonna be ready. I like to cook from scratch quite a bit, but every once in a while I find a baking mix, especially a gluten-free one that I wanna try out. And I had bought this one from Wegmans when we were visiting our family in North Carolina. We don't have a Wegmans here, but I grabbed this because my mom had made a cake using a mix from Wegmans that was really good. And also this Krusty's cinnamon swirl coffee cake mix is something that Peyton likes. And it's just so easy to keep on hand. I also received some new bakeware from Caraway Home. You guys know I love their cookware. Their bakeware is just as wonderful. It's so high quality. So if you're in the market for something like that, check them out. I've got a link down in the description box where you can get 10% off site-wide. And they have just introduced two new gorgeous colors for their bakeware, Marigold and Sage. Earlier I mentioned that I got some great advice from you guys in the comments from last week's video. And the first one comes from Christine from Australia who suggested that we elevate the plants on our wooden front porch to prevent stains and rot. And you can see some stains already developing and I don't know why it didn't occur to me to do this, but I really appreciate this suggestion. So I found these on Amazon. I will put them in the home section of my Amazon store if you guys are interested. They are very sturdy. They hold quite a heavy pot and they come in a four pack, which was perfect because we have four of these planters on our front porch. So Patrick helped me lift these up and now the water will drain and not pool at the bottom of these planters and it will really protect our wood. So thank you so much Christine for this suggestion.
I bought several of these cinnamon swirl gluten-free coffee cake mixes when they were on sale to keep in our extended pantry and I need to rotate through them plus Peyton loves them like I said but I decided that I would switch it up a little bit and follow the instructions on the back for muffins instead of the coffee cake that I normally make. Muffins are always great because they are sort of individual portions and if I have extras, they freeze easily. So I thought it would be great to try out in my new muffin pan. A while before we moved, I decluttered my old muffin pan. It was just such a pain. It was supposed to be non-stick, but things did stick to it. It had little grooves around the edges where food would get caught and cleaning up was just a nightmare. So I'm hoping that this pan is a lot different. And I also really like that it's non-toxic. make the muffins you do it basically the same way you make the coffee cake you make layers so you start with one layer of batter and then you add some of the crumble mixture and another layer of batter and more crumble mixture on top Once in a while on the weekends, I like to make a special treat like this. It's not something that we normally have during the week. So we were really looking forward to these muffins and I was a little bit worried when I saw how they turned out. <laughs> they really spilt over and I would have to say for this particular mix, maybe making muffins wasn't the best idea. Not only was the pan a big mess, but it dripped in the oven below. And so I'm really glad that I had that non-stick liner on the bottom shelf. That stuff really saved me from having to clean out our oven, which you know I hate to do. Fortunately, the non-stick surface of this cookware was a lifesaver. The muffins popped right out and the muffin pan was super easy to clean. Nothing stuck to it at all. So I'm glad that I experimented with these muffins so I know what not to do as far as the muffins go, but the pan was no problem whatsoever. The muffins were actually a big hit with the guys. They could care less what they looked like. They tasted amazing. And because cleanup wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, it was a win after all. One little task that I have been meaning to do for ages in our home is to get a magic eraser, and you can see I cut mine in half, and go around to all the doors and get rid of the fingerprints. So some of these are probably from the previous owners, from the various workmen that we've had in the home, you know, installing the floors and things like that, and from us as well. So I noticed that they especially occur around the places that we just touch on the doors. So anywhere around the handles and a magic eraser just quickly removes those marks. It doesn't take any time at all, but it makes the most amazing difference in the way things look. Instantly, your home looks refreshed after you do this and it only takes a few minutes.
stick erasers would definitely be in the top group of things that I value the most as far as cleaning tools. They really are magic. And I don't know why I didn't think of this because I used magic erasers in our previous home to clean our tub because it was acrylic, but I never really thought about how useful they are at removing really stubborn stains. This suggestion came from Liesl who reminded me in the comments to try a magic eraser on the tub stains that I mentioned in my last video. Previously, I tried several different things and nothing really made much of a difference. The tub was very clean, but these stubborn stains just would not go away. And as you can see, the magic eraser is really doing the job. So it takes a little bit of elbow grease. I went over it a couple of different times, but I don't think I spent more than 10 or 15 minutes. It even helped remove this sort of like rust stain that happens when the water runs down. I didn't get that 100%, but I have a feeling if I go back again, I can remove even more. And look how amazing this tub looks. It looks absolutely brand new. Peyton loved it. He was so appreciative of it. And I was really, really grateful to Liesl for reminding me about the magic eraser. Another one of those mundane tasks that I had just been overlooking was to clean this vent exchange for our air conditioning and heating system. Usually I can just take the vacuum and go over it because it's just dust that's been accumulating there. But on this grate, it was more than that. And so this one's in the kitchen. So I don't know if it was like the kitchen grease over a long period of time or what. Probably hasn't been cleaned in a long time. And so the vacuum didn't really do the full job. After I finished vacuuming, I realized that there was still sort of a film on each one of these grooves. So my first idea was to wipe it down thoroughly with a damp microfiber cloth. That is the type of thing that works really well in these situations, but I found it hard to get into the small spaces. So I had the idea of grabbing a chopstick and sort of wrapping the microfiber cloth around it so that I could reach those hard to reach places. That actually worked quite well. However, <laughs> I knew it was gonna take me way too long to get into each of these small little spaces and do a really good job. So after a few minutes, I gave up on this idea and came up with a new one. I realized that I could take this grate out. So I took it to my laundry room sink and with my dish brush that is filled with 50% vinegar, white vinegar, and 50% dishwashing liquid, I scrubbed it and rinsed it and it came out like new. This task only took about 15 minutes and it would have been even faster if I had come up with the final solution first. <laughs> but now I know that it's a job that can be accomplished very easily. And so I will maintain it and not let it go for so long in between. But now whenever I look into that corner of the kitchen, I'm not greeted with the eyesore that it used to be. And I'm really grateful that I took the time to just get it done.
This week, I really wanted to make meatloaf for dinner. I was reminded by my mom who was telling me that she made a big batch of meatloaf and then she formed it into small loaves that she could freeze for sort of individual portions or you know, sort of one meal portions for her and my dad during the week. And so I really was in the mood for meatloaf and I also wanted to make smaller portions. So I decided to use my regular meatloaf recipe, modify it just very slightly and make it into meatloaf muffins. I have shared my recipe for meatloaf with you before, but in case you missed it, I will put it down in the description box. So I mostly bake gluten-free in our home and definitely for meals that we share, I will make it gluten-free. And I found that a great way to change up meatloaf to make it gluten-free is to take gluten-free oats and use those instead of breadcrumbs. And I just process them slightly in my blender or food processor so that it's sort of a coarse oat flour. And I add that into the meatloaf along with some minced onion because I prefer that over fresh onion, but you can do what you like. <laughs> and I also like to add freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I think that just gives it the most amazing flavor. Whenever I have fresh basil, I love to use that in this recipe, but when I don't, this freeze-dried basil I think is a great substitute, and I think it has a much better flavor than your traditional dried basil. I have found these freeze-dried herbs in the refrigerated section of most grocery stores. I also like to add some dried oregano, and if you have fresh, that would be amazing as well. I think that the basil and the oregano give it a really great Italian flavor along with the Parmesan cheese, and that's kind of what I'm going for with this meatloaf recipe. I like to mix up my meatloaf using my stand mixer, but you do have to be careful because you don't want to over process it. And as you can see, I made a mess when I started my mixer. So I'm gonna take a second to clean that up before the mess spreads throughout the kitchen. I know I didn't do a thorough job, but I'll come back and get the rest later. Once I filled each cup of the muffin pan with the meatloaf mixture, I topped it with some bacon bits. And the reason why I did that is because in my original recipe, sometimes I would wrap the loaf in bacon. I got that idea, I think from the Pioneer Woman and it was really delicious. So I wanted to have that same flavor and this was my solution for that. Another big advantage to making the meatloaf like this was that it really reduced the baking time. So I baked them in an oven that was preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I only had to bake them for about 20 minutes. It takes at least twice that long to do a loaf, and they came out perfect. I served them with a side of peas, and they were really easy to make too. I just sauteed some onion, added some of those bacon bits and some frozen peas, and that was done in no time. These meatloaf muffins were a big hit. They were easy to make. They definitely reduced the time that I needed to spend in the kitchen because they only took half the time to bake. And I can freeze them and keep my freezer stocked with things that I can pull out on a busy weeknight. One of the other things that I really love about Caraway is that they think about storage too. And so for the bakeware, I wanted to take the larger tray and store it above the refrigerator because it's a little tall for the area where I'm going to keep the rest. And I want to declutter my rusty pan <laughs> because now I have a really nice replacement. So that easily went at the top of my refrigerator. That was the perfect solution for me because I'm 5'9 and I can easily reach this area and it's a nice tall cabinet to accommodate this large baking sheet. The rest of the pieces I knew would fit really well in the lower drawer of this sort of butler's pantry area that we added. This drawer is super deep, but it's not quite tall enough for that large baking pan. 
and I had to rearrange a few things to fit it in and I always laugh at myself when I'm editing because I'm so indecisive. I always try a bunch of different things until I get the solution that I'm happy with but in the end it fit in here perfectly and it will be a very easy accessible storage solution for my new bakeware. The last recipe I wanted to show you was for blueberry buckle. So we have a lot of really nice fresh blueberries in the grocery store right now and I wanted to make something with that and this recipe came to mind. I'll link it down in the description box. And I actually took a regular recipe and just substituted this gluten-free measure for measure flour from King Arthur. So the original recipe calls for all-purpose flour but I found this to be a great swap out. If you've never heard of blueberry buckle, it's basically a blueberry coffee cake. So very similar to that cinnamon swirl coffee cake that I showed you earlier. It combines blueberries and lemon zest, which is an amazing combination. My family loves this, and if you've never tried it, I hope you will. We love it for breakfast or brunch, but it's also a really good dessert, especially if you top it with some vanilla ice cream. Once you have all of the ingredients, I find that it's just as easy to throw together as any box mix. You basically just cream the butter and sugar together, then you add in your flour mixture along with some milk. When those things are well combined, you can fold in the blueberries. And to keep them from settling to the bottom of the coffee cake, it really helps if you toss them with a little bit of the gluten-free flour before you mix them in. Spread the mixture in the bottom of a buttered baking pan. This one is a little larger than the 8x8 that was called for in the original recipe. So I adjusted the baking time to make it a little bit shorter and just checked it to make sure they didn't get over baked. And it turned out great. It was a little bit thinner, but it was really delicious all the same. To make the crumble for the topping, just combine butter, brown sugar, some of the gluten-free flour, and a little cinnamon, and spread it over the top before baking. I had a lot of fun baking this week, but also getting some of those tasks checked off my list that maybe I had been procrastinating on. I hope that this video gave you motivation to do the same. 
I really appreciate you watching with me all the way to the end of the video and I want to thank you for your comments. As you can see, they are really appreciated. I learned so much from you and I love hearing from you. So leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video on Sunday. Until then, have a wonderful week.